In the Nazarene law, Namausa Nazari, you must honor and protect the weak, the persecuted, and all beings that suffer. For it's not simply a matter of following the way, the narrow path for which few shall wander, but a state of being that permeates the depths of our souls. Is it not in our heart's best interest to extend our hands out to those that need it most? Here at Feather's Tale, we exist completely by the donations of those that extended their hands to our children. Because of this, we are able to give these children round-the-clock care, on-staff medical and physical therapy, as well as education, and most importantly, the unconditional love and support they desperately need. If you would like to extend your hands out to these children, please visit us at www.sharetanzania.co.uk. Malkuta Deshmiel, Inanna Rakma. Today is Easter, and at this time where Billions are celebrating the story of the resurrection. I felt a want to make this video. A few days ago I listened to the Gospel of John on audiobook and as I was listening the endless depths of the mystic side of this story kept coming to my mind and and the struggle I feel in this world that, that this is not brought to humanity continues to be an issue. I deeply feel that there would be a great upgrade to humanity's consciousness if we understood the other side of this story. And so I want to speak into the many layers of the resurrection and crucifixion. This time of the year billions are celebrating a story which is supposed to bring humanity inner peace. It's supposed to make us love without condition as Yeshua did. It is supposed to give us supernatural ability. These signs will follow those that believe. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak or pray in a new tongue. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. These are all things that I have seen. This reality sometimes can be stranger than fiction. But the vast majority celebrating this resurrection would question if any of that even exists. And I say that is because a lot of the time these mystic teachings and the truth of what was being asked of humanity in them is being missed by those representing the message. The resurrection and crucifixion. It is steeped in mystery and conspiracy. It is the Christ spiracy. Many elements of religious institutions have the knowledge is why people say that but they've chosen not to share it. They've chosen not to bring it into their teaching, into the mainstream, into the endless churches around the world. We live in a world where this story clearly has not worked as it should. We live in a culture which has fallen. We live in Babylon still. Perversion is rife. Addiction is rife. Even Christians who are supposed to have inner peace don't have it, so they are medicating on pharmaceuticals, alcohol, food. Something has not worked. And that something boils down to the human. And how we take that story and how we operate in life afterwards. And so I'm going to speak into the resurrection as an historical event. I'm going to speak into it about the alteration in the movement of our life and the operating system by which we function every single day. The inner physiology, which is also encoded 
in the resurrection and crucifixion and I'll touch briefly on the astrological for all four are present in this profound and amazing time and story that was recorded and to ignore any element of that is to ignore the spirit of truth which is the Holy Spirit which Yeshua said you must never do we'll start with the literal because this is the one that's celebrated but it's supposed to have set humanity free from sin it's supposed to give us supernatural power it's supposed to mean that when you meet somebody you're not analyzing and working out if you trust them or or if you're going to manipulate them it means that you love them and your mind is not present in that the traditional story is that the son of god god himself incarnate paid for humanity's sin on the cross before that all religions in the east etc they had salvation but it was salvation that was done by working through your karma the notion of yeshua was that that is over this long journey of working through your karma working through your errors it's over by bringing into this world the the Christ, the last son of Adam, the first kind of a new human. Those who understand that are supposed to be set free from sin, to have supernatural power, etc. To have this love. But we can see it hasn't happened for most. Now the way that I have often looked at this is that if I use language which is modern, it helps. We live in a 3D matrix, and it is a fallen world, according to the Bible. The fallen angels made it fall. I believe the fallen angels are technological. I believe they have advancements. I don't believe that only sentient humans had technology. I believe, indeed, the, the minions of Satan have technology as well. And they have hacked the source code of reality and written over that with fallen codes as false creator gods. We as humans have an element within us which takes the source code, churns it up inside of us and turns it into a fallen state. And they want that because they want the light of God as a fuel. They want the light of God to fall. And it can only fall in a sentient life with free will, which we are. Humans take procreation, a gift from God, between two people to bring life into the world. Magic, beautiful, sacred. We take this from the source code, we feed it into the body and we churn it up and we turn it into perversion. We turn it into selfish meanness. I must have that pleasure every single day and more and more deprived because it becomes all about the five sense pleasure. This reality, this matrix, the divine embodiment of God in a being, Christ, that arrived here, started a new program inside this reality where humanity could be saved, where greater works than, than Yeshua you could do, for he will have gone to the Father, meaning he left a path, an opening, whereby which you now function inside this 3D matrix, but you can sidestep the fallen elements of the matrix, the fallen cords, as it were, and you can connect to the Christ, thanks to the sacrifice of Yeshua. In sending Yeshua here into this world which was so corrupted, in this species which was so corrupted, Source knew, God knew, that the outcome would be what it would be. For even today, those who choose that higher love are persecuted. They become ill. They are killed. They are murdered. Because still the ruler of this world, the dominant consciousness, frequency of this world is Satan. The God of this world is Satan. And so Yeshua pays this price on the cross for humanity. But here we are, what has been offered there is a license for you to have an altered state. For you 
to be able to stand before God and not have to go through years and years of meditation to work your way through your karma so that you can have the awakened spiritual rebirth. But there is an offer here, a doorway, that through a repentant heart who truly, that means a being, an awareness within you, the soul awareness within you recognizes that the personal self, the personal history, which has been indulging in, in five sense pleasure and selling the light of God, your soul essence, into the hands of the enemy in this extraction matrix, you have an ability to stand, not through endless work, but through trust in the promise of God's love through this, and that code which is left in reality, the Holy Spirit, which we minister with and commune with, that you can stand in righteousness. You can stand upright and holy and righteous and deserving of all of the power and blessings of God as if sin and wrongdoing never existed one time in your life. That was what the offer of the crucifixion and resurrection was. But churches are not teaching that. They're not trying to bring people up into that righteous state because that state, that frequency, gives you power in this reality and it's needed. You need that power in this reality because there's an enemy in this reality that is trying to make you sell your essence back into the fallen state. How many of us have heard the resurrection story and feel that? All of your errors, past, present and future, were forgiven on that cross. The enemy and his power was defeated. How does that feel, to hear that, on that cross? It brings a new consciousness inside you, a power, a confidence, that is lacking inside Christian circles. Because this story has not been told correctly, and preachers are still going around saying, Ah, God will punish you, God made you sick. In which case, how can you be Christian? For Yeshua has supposedly paid the price for it all. And therefore God has stopped punishing in this world. Stopped judging. This is, the, this is what it offered. You can't have both. You have to have only the truth of that. You were forgiven of everything. It was paid for. Past, present, future. Now it doesn't mean you have a license to do what you want. Because when you do indulge in selling the soul essence of what you are into the hands of Satan through world worship and letting the, the impulse of the five senses alone and the adornment of, of the flesh, as it were, the lusts of the body, be your God, be the driving seat of your life, then you will suffer and others will suffer. And you will disconnect in your frequency from the highest chord which Yeshua left and back into the worldly chord which he came to set us free from. And in that worldly cord, you will suffer. The demonic will be with you. And so we were set free. We have the ability to overcome here. We were forgiven. If you mess up, which you will, repentance goes hand in hand with resurrection and crucifixion. And this is one of the most integrally important things here about resurrection. Because that means that you today, not through understanding that you're holy and righteous, but by the holy and righteousness and the love of God, you can stand in righteousness and power in this world. And when you stand in righteousness and power in this world, what you will see happens is that self-interest goes away because most of us are operating in the fallen technology of the body that Yeshua came to set us free from. The fallen technology is this. You have a personal history and your mind generates a personal self on the end of that and it's filled with desires, ambitions and wants and it has its own will and it is the driving force of most humans' lives. They analyze every moment. They're always analyzing, plotting, planning, intelligence alone. Separated from the other guidance system the spontaneous, unpredictable love of the presence of Christ. It's two operating systems. And therefore, if you truly believe this, you get untangled from self-condemnation. You come to a point 
where in that open space, that frequency of righteousness, the mind goes quiet. And there you die and Christ is born. And so this is what the literal story is supposed to bring to you. That power here and now. Yeshua died for you. This story is about you. It's not about a historical character. It's about you today. You today and your power today to do greater works than Christ for he will have gone to the Father and you can. And it's not blasphemy. He said those words. If you do not have inner peace and you're medicating, something hasn't gone right. If you're not driving out demons, something hasn't gone right. If you're not healing the sick, something hasn't gone right. Or you haven't yet developed into it. I have two of those in my life, but I don't yet understand healing. But I've seen healing, and I know it's there. I have an absolute knowing that it's possible. This world is stranger than fiction sometimes. But only when you move in the operating system away from the self, the analysis, which, 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 which wants to dismantle God and box it and control it through technology and science alone. It doesn't want to move in the supernatural. And so I will move on to the next element of this story. Yeshua was wounded five times on the cross and he was crucified in Golgotha. Golgotha is Aramaic for the place of the skull. Aramaic was Yeshua's mother tongue. And in his mother tongue, he called himself a follower of the way. He called his disciples followers of the way. And I also am a follower of the way. And you should become one too. For that way is universal. And it leads to the love and presence of Christ, which is that highest unconditioned love that humans can find and embrace in this world. And the guidance of it. There is significance here because... The writers put symbology for you to understand, for it to pass through the ages, and they had to because the, the literal religious minds couldn't cope with that. Look at the genocides of the Cathars. The Catholic Church burned people alive in the name of a messiah of unconditioned love. Just ridiculous, because what was happening was the operating system of the fallen, the personal self that is built on the personal history, it can't have the love of God and it can adopt religious paraphernalia and symbology. It can adopt that and present itself as religious, but it doesn't mean it's been born again. It can say it, but it doesn't mean that it is. And this is a problem that many are in in this world. They have been told they are born again, but they haven't been told the operating system of nationality, academic achievement, family relationships, career path, all of these roles and identities your mind has told you that you are, they've added on to that born again or Christian. Born again Christian. But this is not true. That operating system must be wiped out for the rebirth to start. It's not a concept of the mind to be born again. It can help to follow that which is taught to be away from sin. It can help. It's beautiful. But... We need transformation in spirit, and that comes, the rebirth comes, when the operating system takes a knee. That's why Yeshua said, you must forget your mother, your father, your brother, your sister. It's not that you don't love them. It's that that identity in the mind doesn't control the movement of the intentions and intelligence of your body. The operating system of the un unpredictable, spontaneous will of Christ does that. And so... Yeshua is crucified in Golgotha and he takes five wounds. Now I've covered this in depth, but in mystic Christianity, they understood there were four stages of human consciousness. These were understood not through scientific apparatus, but by going within and moving through different states of being within them. In modern science, we have seen that with apparatus and we have called it four frequency states of the brain beta alpha theta delta the ancients had four and they called it earth water air fire if you look for a liar on a lie detector test beta frequency is what you look for earth level if you see someone gluttonizing they're in high beta frequency beta the earth level is the place where we become corrupted and we must be able to move out of that 
to reprogram it. Otherwise, we're constantly just reacting to the habituated self of the world, the sin-based self of the world that's hooked and chained to the matrix, the 3D matrix of extraction. We must elevate from beta to look back at that program and alter it to alpha. We must move from earth to water. Yeshua is wounded five times. When you overcome your five senses, when you overcome these five senses as the operating system and the separate personal self it creates, as the operating system for your decisions every day, you will move from beta to alpha and start to change it. You'll move from earth to water. The five senses are the five wounds. They are overcome, the five wounds of the man Yeshua. Yeshua was a man until he ascended and resurrected and became Christ. The five wounds, and then the fifth wound is a spear. You have a wound in each angle, a wound in each wrist. The fifth wound is a spear to the ribs, and from there comes water and blood. That water represents a movement in consciousness from that earth level of consciousness up over. And as you move up over, you begin to be able to organize the habituated habit of self. You must break that habit of who you are to be able to move up into the spirit-led man, to serve Christ. This all takes place at Golgotha, the place of the skull. For when we retain our vitality and don't spend it <coughs> in worldly living, our energy builds up and we gain dominion. We become centered in our skull here at Golgotha. And this is not a one-off. For David defeated Goliath by taking five rounded stones and striking the giant Goliath here in Golgotha, in the place of the skull. That giant was his worldly self. It was his five sense character, the, the separate personal self based in there. He overcame it by overcoming the five senses. It's the same story in its encoded language. And it doesn't take away from anything. It's a truth that we must not step over, I feel. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeshua then ascends and becomes Christ. And it is said that you must die and Christ must be born, but your heart must keep beating. And so the death of you is the death of the image of you in your mind. Your personal history and the personal self built on the end of that, it must pass. And it must pass by having dominion over the impulse of your five senses. If it's running away to the world all the time, running to your addictions all the time, medicating with whatever all the time, then you are not going to be able to die and Christ be born. Because self will be reinforced by those behaviours. You may be having physiological and psychological addiction. Most have psychological impulse into pleasure and physiological attachment to it as well. This is why we fast. We fast, we reset the physiological attachment, we elevate our consciousness and we look at the beta earth level of consciousness and its repetitive cycles sending us into the world and we reorganize them and we say no to them. This is the other layer. This is all bringing us back to the presence of God, the true peace, and with it, the ability to meet humans, and no matter who they are, to love them first. To not protect yourself with your thoughts, not analyze, not work out what you can get from them, just to love them, honor them, and have empathy for them first. It's a very real state of consciousness, I know, because I've walked in it, and have not walked in it as well. <clears throat> the next layer of this beautiful story, this beautiful uh, encoded uh, depiction and story and, and, and record of what happened here, is that inside the human body, we have an inner Christ. The ancients called it the chrism the sacred secretion I've begun to call it. This sacred secretion is released in the body and it allows us to move into the higher mind and the higher mind is important because the higher mind does not analyze constantly. The higher mind is very still and there we operate from something more than the 
endless chatter of the monkey mind, the endless analysis of life and with its separation from it. You are in unity with God in all things, but if you analyze that, you create an analyzer inside you, subjective analysis outside. You separate from it. If you end analysis, you end separation. And this is where the higher mind comes in, but there is a physiological element to that. Now, I have never opened up a human body to see this, but the ancient texts depict how it works, and I have witnessed it at this time in the month where they say it will happen for each individual. I'll get onto that. I see it happening in my life. I see it happening in the lives of those around me who walk with Christ. I see it happening in the lives of those who have followed what I've said and say that it's, it's working as well. And so I know that this is correct. How the ancients attained that knowledge, I do not know. Perhaps beings from another world came to explain it, perhaps out-of-body experience with spirit, I, I don't know. But I do know this, and I'll get on to the interest of the fallen world and technology as well with this. We have within us a secretion that comes from the claustrum of the brain. And I won't go into heavy detail, it's not necessary, but this secretion at one time every month is secreted from the body. The moon will enter the star sign at which you were born every single month, so 12 times a year. I was born in Aries, so every time the moon enters Aries, I feel my own secretion starting. I feel it beginning. And it is a complete change in your frequency. It's a complete change in the state of your mood. Now, many have this happening and don't even know it. They just put it down to spirit is with me. Or they put it down to I'm just in a great mood at the moment. I just feel more energetic. I feel better. But if you become conscious and aware of your surroundings, of your body, and of what is happening in the night sky as well, then you begin to understand that there is a truth to this. This secretion, this chrism, travels through your 33 vertebrae of your spine. And it is met from the five fused vertebrae, the sacral plexus, the sacred place, with a, a Christ seed, they call it, a germ of sorts. And it reignites the, the secretion, makes a journey back up the 33 vertebrae. As it travels up, it passes through the hypoglossal, and in the hypoglossal, to this day in medical science, they say there is an olive. And so the human is therefore anointed with this sacred oil, olive oil. It is anointed as it passes through that 12th cranial nerve and the olive. In religion, we're still rubbing olive oil on the brow. And there is a space for ceremony, but this is the anointing of olive oil. This is it for this. This brings you into the presence of the Holy Spirit in your frequency. It then enters the thalamus, and it sits in the thalamus for two and a half days, just as Yeshua sat in the tomb for two and a half days before he was resurrected. Then it moves, and when it moves, it goes to the pituitary and the pineal, and there it is said that it is crucified or amplified in power. In that space, the pituitary secretes serotonin, and the pineal secretes a substance which we believe is DMT from modern science. The ancients called it honey. But it is the land flowing with milk and honey, the promised land. When that happens, you will find that your life of constantly repenting and struggling with the world and its, your addictions, that you somehow have a frequency state where you feel whole, fulfilled, content, and you don't have a mind which is erratic and running after these problems, running after your habits, your sins, etc., your, your pleasures. You have this profound stillness and with it the profound presence of God. And in that space, supernatural capacity is increased. Your ability to drive out demons because you're holding a frequency which is profound. It's the frequency of the Holy Spirit. This is the anatomy that is going on inside of you. This is the the crucifixion and resurrection inside of you. Yeshua was crucified at the age of 33. So too is the ichthos, the chrism within you. 
This takes place between the two thieves, your eyes. The eyes steal it away for they lust after the world. And so this is beautiful because when we are in presence, and many, you don't need to know that. You do not need to know how the car works to drive it well. It's not necessary. But many who are in the presence of God and they know it, they are speaking with God, their prayers are being answered, they hear God, they're having visions. It's all happening due to the anatomical response of you protecting that. This alters the frequency that you can perceive and decode this, this reality with. The bandwidth of this reality is altered by that. This is the physiology of it. Do you need to know it? No, you don't. All you need to know is by grace, God loves you and accepts you. All you need to know is that you must repent and there spirit will come and lead you into walking a more pure life so you can become a holy vessel which will lead to this occurring anatomically inside of you. It's not something you can hijack and many want to experience it, but the, the operating system of wanting an experience of it is an operating system of the fallen in a sense, because the want of having an experience means that you are a separate being who wants to attain it. You want to hold it, but you can't. You're not a separate being who wants to hold it and attain it. This process is you returning to unity with Christ. You die and Christ is born. If you must die and Christ be born, how can you attain this, you see? And this is where people get tripped up. They don't understand the difference. How do I make this sacred secretion work? First of all, the one who's saying, how do I, must go away. It must go away. You must yield to God and let spirit take over. You must, in the same sense, in normal Christian teaching, you must yield to God, you die and Christ be born. So your supernatural capacity is born. But most don't do that. Most allow the mind to build a new self that's religious, etc. And so the supernatural capacity doesn't necessarily come through. And so here we stand. We understand now that if we want to go to God, then we must repent and turn away from the operating system of the personal history, the personal self, which is addicted to the world and is arrogant and prideful and wants control of its own life. When we do that and we allow Christ to become our operating system, we die and Christ is born. God's will is precedent over our own. When we do that, our five senses die, as Yeshua was wounded five times. And, and when the five senses die, you automatically begin to become a holy vessel. Now that salvation is at the beginning, but now if you want to become a warrior for God, if you want to work and fight and build God's kingdom and love in this world, then there's something more. You don't just go back to your national identity and kick back and keep watching your soaps and your movies and say, I'm saved, that'll do. There is work to do here and this is not salvation. This is a concept of it and you've just abandoned everything that was offered to you. And so we have to understand that becoming a holy vessel means that we bring more frequency into the 3D matrix of that which Christ left behind, this holy frequency, the presence of the Holy Spirit, and with it more power for our intelligence and our actions to be animated on a bedrock of unconditioned love of Christ, not on selfish ambition and selfish am and, and, and fear. And, and selfish desire, which is where most of us are functioning from in this world. Most celebrating this resurrection is still functioning in that operating system. And so when a human is born again, you will see it. You see it in their face. You see the light in their eyes, but you see it in their demeanor, their activities. You see it because it is true that they have died, their self, their self-interest, the way that they were, it all fades away. The arrogance drifts. And in that space, for all you can't see it, the anointing has happened, for you have been anointed with the oil of gladness above your peers, as the Bible says. This is the oil of gladness. And it is that way 
in this world, I feel that there are those who hijack this. There are re religions that hijack this, and I don't know how they've done it. I don't pretend to fully understand that. But they do not commune with the Christic. They commune with the higher dimensional force, the fallen angels. And so the life of purity must be necessary. This is why some people go to raise their energy and then run back to Christianity because they were immediately afflicted by the demonic because they were living without any rules. And so their worldly behavior was still corrupted. They were still selling the light of God into the presence of the enemy, into the presence of the fallen, the extraction matrix of sin, and then hoping to elevate to the Christic but they were elevating to another spiritual realm and the foundations of their life meant that their frequency matched the realm that was not Christic. So all of this ties into us awakening into the presence and that presence is that you move in absolute compassion and every human you meet, you love them. You have supernatural capacity, you decode new bandwidths of reality, you start to perceive entities, you start to drive them out, you witness healings, and indeed the prayer of spirit, which I have seen called tongues, I've seen called light language, true prayer in spirit, not these people who fake it. It has a power and it's real. And Yeshua was absolutely full of truth in this, that his believers should have that. And so finally, I just touch on this briefly, just for the, the, the beauty of how it's all interrelated. This world is stranger than fiction, just because your mind can't get around and understand that. At the same time as all of this happening in the body, in your attitudes and behaviors, in the, the, the story of Yeshua, the son of God who came into this 3D matrix to alter the code forever. Inside the night sky at Christmas, the sun passes through the crux crucifix in the sky then it hits the winter solstice and it stays in the winter solstice for three days it's the three shortest days of the year and then it resurrects and the new year begins the spring begins the end of the harshest months begin this is an undeniable fact the word jesus in greek meant son 888 solar number his name is not jesus of course it's yeshua but they altered it to tie this in because these writers were connected to some profound intelligence that was almost otherworldly. They were connected to a higher place and they encoded all of this for us to see, for it to live on. And it's important, I feel, that we see all of that, that we are awake to all of that and we do not hide from it because it helps us to become better disciples of Christ. It helps us to understand if we are born again or if the fallen system of the mind has played a trick on us and told us that we are. It helps us to become astute and strong in the power of God. It helps us to walk in the Christ. It helps us to have inner peace instead of going to get the Valium from the doctor. It helps us to have authority and righteousness instead of walking around feeling like a hopeless sinner who's no good because it was all forgiven and you've repented and therefore it's all forgiven. You have your license, stand righteous, holy, true and powerful right here, right now. That you're right. And that sense of that power has power in this reality. For the fallen don't have access to the highest source code. They've hacked the source code, I believe, with technology. But you can tune into this world and raise up to the source code, and therefore you can be the source code in this 3D realm. You don't need to hack it. You don't need to tamper with genetics, etc. You don't need to toy with the cosmos using physiological means. You can attune to the source code and you can speak as the authority of the source code in this world. For greater works than he, you will do, for he will have gone to the Father. The source code alignment and attunement is an inner journey. It's not done by shouting and feeling emotional inside church. It's an inner journey of tuning your frequency to the presence of spirit and then speaking with its power and authority in this world. And it's very real. 
warn to the lawgivers, for they take away the keys to the kingdom, for they do not enter within. And so, beyond all of this, all these conceptual elements and historical notions, concepts, how it got to be this way, the whole thing leads to one important truth that you must die and Christ be born and for you to die the personal history, the personal self, it as an operating system which is analyzing everything constantly and not allowing the will of God to animate your intelligence by doing that, by the mind being in the driving seat as the master which the mind is a dreadful master then the resurrection offers you an opportunity to see beyond that operating system, to be born again yourself, where a spontaneous presence of an unconditioned love, which is unpredictable, becomes your operating system. And there you become awakened into the present moment. There you become anchored in the true reality that the only realities humans will ever have is this moment here and now. The notion of chasing the next moment is death to a human. The notion that you will fulfill your joy and happiness next week is death to a human. The notion you will find God next week is death to a human. God is here, God is now, and through grace you can access that. You have to simply see the world at some point without words, language, personal history, interfering with it, depicting it, and there you will end the truth. Truth is a pathless land. Krishnamurti said that. And it's only understood when you arrive in that presence of God. When you are in that space, you understand. You have died and Christ is born. The true compassion of all that you are resonates. No longer is there a personal self that is conditioning the love of God. No longer is there a personal you that is refracting the energy of God and its will. Instead, the love of God comes through and the personal self is quiet. And there you recognize, as was the truth all along, before you got lost in your mind, before you got tangled in the flesh and in sin and in Satan's matrix, that the love with which you love is the love that you are for the generous heart of God poured forth all things and if you align to that truth and remember that you are that generous heart then you will die and Christ will be born and you have the right in this world to stand before God holy, righteous, pow powerful, deserving not because you are, but because within you is the soul essence. And Yeshua paid the price for your soul essence to follow that same path. And you will have supernatural power. You will have inner peace that you can't possibly begin to explain. That you feel like you don't even deserve it. And greater works than he, you will do. For he will have gone to the Father. It is the Christ spiracy. We are the children of Babylon. It's time for us to awaken. God bless, guys.